I remember saying in the last video that faith victories were super easy and underrated and that you can win by turn 150. I'm not going to spoil what happens. I'm just going to say I think you'll enjoy this video. If you would like to catch us stream Civilization live, we stream Civilization and Football Manager over at twitch.tv slash Van Bradley. If you would like to come hang out there, there is a live stream. The link is in the description. Otherwise, kick back, relax, and enjoy the video. At this point in the game, there are only two religions taken, so it is good for us to find out who are the next two people going to be getting a religion. It looks like so far there's only one Enmut player who's actually going for it. We know the Inca aren't going for it, and this other Enmut player, Amongolia, aren't going for it either. So I feel pretty safe about using missionaries here, where I know they can't get beat up by other people's apostles. They're cheaper, they're effective, they can flip the religion over here where I know I'm not gonna face much resistance. And then we got our first apostle goon squad kind of going through. You don't need open borders for these guys to go into cities or anything, so they're great for scouting. But our first kind of apostle goon squad is gonna come and start uh, shaking things up over in this area. I'm going to grab a guru here to send over with this uh, squad so that if they do get into any battles, they can heal up rather quickly with a guru on hand. So our strategy in the Maya territory is to flip religion in the cities first that she has holy sites in. If we flip the religion in the cities with holy sites, she can no longer buy religious units in those cities to kind of counter us. If we flip over here in Koba, that's nice. We'll have one of her cities following our religion, but she can still purchase units at her other holy sites. So the way you actually win a religious victory is by having a majority of cities in each empire following your religion. So right now, if we go to our victory screen and click religion, it says two, two out of six civs converted to Van Bradleyism. We have a majority of our cities, so that's us. We have a majority, right now I can see four, so they must have less than eight cities. Now it does not matter which cities you use to make up the majority. It's not population based or anything. So if someone has 10 cities, you need five of them. They can be the five smallest, easiest to take cities. Over here with Maya, we're focused on shutting down her holy sites because she can actually counter us. But over here um, with Pachacuti, we might just be focused on the easiest four or five to take. Why is this game glitching out like this? The easiest four or five to take because we just need to hit a majority. It doesn't matter which cities we use to make that majority. The reason why this is so important is it helps you prioritize a little bit. Now that I have a majority here, the pressure is going to take care of the rest of the work. I don't need to keep getting, I don't need to get Chan Chan over here. We already have the majority. You do have to be careful because they might settle more cities, which puts you under the level you need for a majority. But it means I can take this missionary and start scouting over this way. And I can take this missionary here and I'm going to start scouting over this way. And we're going to see if we can meet some more people on this map. So here is our first battle. We found some missionaries. Missionaries cannot attack us back. So these are all pretty big victories for these apostles, especially the one with the debater promotion. But they still get hurt a little bit, which is what this guru that's... It's coming. It's a slow process. Well, that's what this guru is going to do to help. I'm going to head into masonry here and then head to legions just in case we need the extra four era score for our unique unit at any point. We definitely won't for this era, um, but it is good to have just in case we do need that era score in the future. I'm going to send some missionaries up into Kokota here and Almalik to start flipping some of these cities to our religion. I'm confident that if she makes any more missionaries over here, I can shut them down with my apostles. Going to grab this plus five campus after chopping out the forest. We have one last settler. I think we'll probably just send it over to this area nice and quick. So once you are in this empire, as you're trying to find missionaries and apostles to take out with your apostles, you can use your charges. Just be careful not to use all the charges. You want to use all but one charge with your apostles. That way they can stick around either as scouts, if they're not good at actually fighting with the debater promotion, or they can stick around with the debater promotion and they can spread religion by defeating enemy religious units. So as you build apostles, you don't want to use all their charges in a typical game. Sometimes there'll be situations where your apostle might be a about to die so using the last charge prevents you from losing a combat battle that might be an instance where you you want to use the last apostle charge but mostly we're just going to start flipping her cities here the one with proselytizer will do the best job these both have debater this is proselytizer yeah the one with proselytizer will do the best job at getting rid of her religion while replacing it with our own if it is god's will that your people believe in our ways who am i to stop it who am i to stop the spread of Van Bradleyism. 
All right, so we should kill this missionary here, which will give you kind of a sneak peek as to how combat victories work in a religious game. So she's brought a missionary. We are going to take it out with our apostle here. Reminder, missionaries cannot attack back. That's why apostles are, apostles are so important, right? But as we do this, it'll increase our pressure in her cities, but also decrease hers. So you see minus 250 Buddhism, plus 250 Van Bradleyism, and that complete, completely wiped out her religion from Wat Kavnal, making this spread do a little bit more for us. And there we go. We've taken over her... Is this her holy city? Yep. We took out her holy city. Now, she cannot buy religious units in this city because they will be for our religion. So you have to be a little bit careful with your gurus because your gurus can also be taken out by enemy apostles. So if you just leave them the kind of free hanging that they will uh, die and you will lose your religious pressure. So ideally, what you want to do is you want to make sure... That your gurus are always next to your apostles, but they will heal any apostle that's connected to them. So we'll use one charge to heal two apostles, and we will keep on trying to flip some of these cities. All right, let's flip Copan with the last charge we're going to use here. Let's flip to Call with this charge here. And now that we have enough cities in this area with the with our religion, the pressure kind of deals with itself. So now I can move on to the next person. We should have. So we have Genghis. We have Inca. We almost have. Maya, which is perfect. So that means there's only two left for us to get. We haven't met them yet, but we will. I'm going to head towards construction here. In an Earth Goddess game, I try my best not to get rid of the wood tiles. So having some lumber mills to put on the wood tiles would be kind of nice. And as you can see, she had one city left in Uxmal where she could buy religious units. So she has. It's not going well for her, but she's trying. All right, we're going to take out this missionary and that should flip Uxmal. Exactly. So we just flipped Uxmal here. And got a bunch of religious pressure without actually having to use a charge, which is why having apostles that can just kind of bully the enemy missionaries is so useful. I'm honestly just trying to find the other two people. I think we can win this by turn 150 if I can literally just find where the other two people on this map are. All right, we are going to go for Exodus of the Evangelists here. Plus two movement for all missionaries, apostles, inquisitors. Plus two charges for newly built units. Let's win this game in this era. In our cities here, we're still doing basic stuff that we would do in other games. Get our good districts down, a good campus, some good harbors down. We're not really doing anything crazy. Using some builders where we can to get some of these good tiles uh, worked for our empire. Really just focusing with our faith on buying units. But otherwise, I know I'm not talking about it much. It's pretty standard stuff that you do in most games. Just kind of hanging out, getting our cities up and running, and making sure we're good to go if this faith game takes a little bit longer than we think it might. All right, we found one of the last two. Tamaris of Scythia. Hello. Where are you? All right, we're going to take plus 10 combat strength for uh, our religion, please. Thank you. We'll see how that goes. I don't know. That doesn't usually go well. It went well. Scythia has founded a religion now as well. So we shall rinse and repeat our process up here, trying to take out some missionaries and whatnot. We have a steady stream of units coming in. They're just taking a while. You have to consider the movement. It takes a while for all these units to move around. Yeah, we got lots of people coming in here. Look at that. In the science tree, I'm just going to head for apprenticeship and education here. Nothing fancy. Nothing fancy pantsy at all. Just kind of your usual stuff. All right, we circumnavigated because our religious units are so good at scouting. Uh, but we shall indeed start flipping some of these cities over to Van Bradleyism. This apostle is literally just here to goon squad. Maya. There's no real chance for her. If she, like, gets Chitsunitsa, builds a holy site, grabs an Inquisitor, comes over all before our pressure kind of hits her, that might be an option, but there's not a, a lot of hope. But this apostle is just here, so if she builds any units, they just immediately get kind of bopped right before they can go and do some damage, and then the rest of us are going to go and flip the, the rest of the world here. Tamaris is being a little bit of a grumble bug. Just a little, a little baby. Just a wee grumble bug about uh, us taking her city's over so she's not happy about it <laughs> i'm just gonna focus here on the religious city states for now no reason for me to do much else and cyrus is last we found him cheeky apostle he also appears to have lost a settler which is you know a bit unfortunate does he only have one city if we flip this city is that his only he must have another city down here it doesn't look like he does what all right all right we have passed our gate. Is that a majority? It is not. He has another city. He has two other cities. Because if he had two, that would be a majority. All right. He has another city we got to find. Pakrova. Pakrovka. Oh, that's going to be... It's a tough nut to crack. 
It's a tough nut to crack up here. We're gonna need to get another missionary up here. Chertomlik should be easy though. Chertomlik will be easy. I'm gonna grab Moksha just to show you what Moksha does. What Moksha does is it really helps disseminate pressure from a central city, right? So let's say you really want the pressure from Ravenna to stay up, right? Because that way it helps kind of flip these cities nearby. Then we'll put him in Ravenna. We have uh, Pingali here, so we don't want to do that. But his main ability kind of helps keep pressure near the city that he's in. And so I think to start, we'll put him in Sesia. I think that's fine. Head here, keeps Lisbon under control. Now, having city-states under your religion is isn't explicitly helpful or like counted towards the victory here, but it does help with pressure, right? If you have eight citizens of Lisbon following your re religion, they help push it on Al, Al Malik. Uh-oh! I knew there was barbs here. I kind of whatever with the slinger. Whatever, it's not great, but he'll, he'll be fine. He was not fine. In our cities here, I'm just buying a steady lineup of missionaries and apostles to keep sending over this way. At some point soon, I reckon within uh, five to ten turns, we'll win this game. We just need enough units here to kind of keep um, this religion under control because we've already kind of nubbed this one in the butt. Also, be careful to avoid free city units or units you are at war with. Obviously, units you are at war with can, can pillage these things. I just lost an apostle because they just sent a mad horseman running around to kill my apostle. So be a little bit careful on the transition here. You can go around on the water instead. Okay, so it is just the one city. He does just have the one city. We have flipped it. So if we flip these two cities here, that's a win. We've seen two of these three cities and that's a win. All right, we have her capital. All right, there's just one left. We just need one of these two. Oh, we're so close. I believe in us. All right, we are going to take... Oh, we're not here yet, but we want theocracy. Sorry, I thought we were at theocracy, but either way. Either way, theocracy is what we're going for, though. We might win before that even happens. That's it! What is that, turn 130? <laughs> Did we do it by turn 130? I called it before turn 150. I didn't think we'd do it that early. I didn't even think we'd do it before. I didn't think we'd do it before Theocracy. Wow. Really helpful that Cyrus only had one city. I mean, literally, that's how you win a faith game, though. It's literally that simple. Bunch of holy sites. Bunch of faith. Once you're done that, everything else can be normal. Campuses, theater squares, commercial hubs. Get a good army of apostles to go around early and bully the other civilizations that have religions. Look up which ones they are. Go and bully them into submission so you own the map. And then from there, you can buy your cheaper missionaries now that they can't die. And they can just run around the map and flip everyone forever. I'm so happy with that. What turn is that officially? I had an official 124, 126 ish. One sec here, just one more turn. Turn 128. That was a turn 128 victory. I hope you enjoyed this video of how to win a faith victory. I have no idea what we're going to do on Friday. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe button. All right. Come check us out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Van Van Brad. What am I saying? Twitch.tv slash Van Bradley. We stream a civilization and football manager over there all the time. It's a good time. You should come check it out. Otherwise, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what you want to do the next tutorial on. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.